Hello everyone, welcome back to the new episode of our tutorial series on Task Manager with PHP and MySQL. In the previous episode, we have successfully designed our homepage for our application and we also designed uh, another managed list page for our application. And in this tutorial, we will learn to insert or add a list in our database and we will also display those lists in our managed list page from database. Uh, using PHP programming language. So without further ado, let's move to our tutorial. Now let's add the functionality to add list in our database. So let's go to our code editor and here uh, let's open our add list.php file and here we will uh, create a form to add the list in our database so let's start with our html design so first let's go with html and then we will have head as usual and the head will be task manager with php and my sql and after head oh sorry we need to cut it this is not inside the head it, this is inside head inside title tag so that must be inside title tag so i'll paste it here and after head we need to have body so body and inside the body first thing we always have is our logo inside our h1 tag so h1 and here it will be task manager and after that we have like let's go to our manage list page so this is our manage list uh, so all the design most of the design will be same as this so we have logo and link to our home page and uh, s3 tag to display the page name and other things so let's create a link to home page and also a s3 tag to display our page name so let's create a home or anchor tag anchor tag this will be home and let's give its link to href is equals to uh, not index after adding the page we will be going back to manage list uh, we can go back to manage list or we can go back to home page so home page will be index.php and similarly we can also add another link for our this page manage list page so we can add link and this is manage list and this link will be our page name which is manage dash p uh, sorry manage dash list dot php so let's save it let's refresh the browser let's go to our uh, add list so we are working on add list page so i'll click on add list button so we have home and manage list so i'll click on manage list to check it so we are on manage list page and if i click on uh, i'll go to add list again and if i click on home button then we are on home page so for now we are working on uh, insert update and delete functionality for list page so we will be going on manage list we won't be looking at at our tasks for some time so let's go to our manage list page and inside the manage list we are working on add list so add list and then we need to display the page name so let's display the page name on our s3 tag so i will create an s3 tag here this is a add list page and after that we need to create a form to add the tasks so at first i'll just refresh the page and see the changes so add list page is showing perfectly now we need to create a form so here i will create a comment so form to add list starts here and i'll copy the comment and paste it below it and this is its ends so it will be ends here and between this uh, we will uh, create a form so form and 
and to make it uh, beautiful to make uh, the elements like input tags and buttons to align perfectly uh, we will create a table and add all the input elements inside the table so here I will create a table and before creating the table and adding input tags or button uh, inside our form we need to specify its type as well or method so method will be post and there are two uh, primary or basically two methods in sending or receiving data from database and in order to submit the form we will be using post method and we can also send the value using get method and if you want to know the description between post and get method then i will put the link in the description so go on that link and you, you will find the difference between post and get method and you also do some research on your own uh, to know more about post and get because they are real important and after the method we also need to get, uh, add another attribute which is uh, action basically this is a link to another page where we process all the data from form and submit into our database if you have uh, another page like uh, add uh, this is add list page and if you are processing the value from add list page then you might have page like at least that action dot psv page where you process all the data and insert the data into database but uh, since this is a small app we will be processing uh, the data on our same page so we will leave it as blank and when you leave it as a blank then the data will be processed on same page so leave it as a blank for now and let's save it by pressing ctrl and s and inside the table let's create our input tags so let's get a row first so i'll create a row and inside that we will have column td and here uh, first thing we want is list name list name list uh, name and since in second column we will add an input tag so td here we will open input and its type will be text and another one we need is name so name will be list underscore name so this is really important because when we submit the form uh, we will uh, use uh, this name to get the value and the name of this name property should not have a uh, space of blank so it is connected with underscore or you can connect with a hyphen sign but you you cannot leave it as a uh, space or blank okay so we have uh, input type for list name and let's also add uh, another row and we will create a column to display list uh, description d r c r i p t i r i p t i u and description and here we will create another column td and here instead of input type let's add a text area text area and let's give its name and name will be list underscore list description as before we cannot have space here and list description that's it and let's save it and let's go to the browser and view it so i will refresh the browser and here we have list name and list description and it would be better if we can see some message or some notice uh, to display the to write the text so let's give it a placeholder so i will add the end of the name here we will add another property which is placeholder let's call it type list name here and similarly in text area let's add a placeholder it will be placeholder type type list description dscp dscrip tion description here and let's save it and let's refresh the browser so i'll refresh the browser and here we have 
the little message or notice and if i type it it will be disappeared but if it's blank and uh, it will show up here again now after this let's add a button to save the form so after the row i will create another row tr and here we will create a column td and here we will create input type submit input type and it will be submit and we need its name as well name is equals to submit and we also need to give its value so value is the name of the button basically the value property will give the name of the button so i will call it if we do not give the value and let's save it and let's view it in our browser we have a button but it did not have it do not have a name so we will give the value as save let's save it again by pressing ctrl and s and let's refresh the browser and here we have a button so that's it we have successfully designed the page now we need to work on submitting this form and adding the data into database so let's work on that for now uh, if i click on save button it submits the page but it uh, nothing happens because we have not uh, processed the data from this form and uh, and saved it in the database so let's work on that to work on that uh, let's go to the end of the html and here we will start our php and here uh, we will write procedural or uh, core php scripts uh, we won't be using object oriented programming or advanced things or any frameworks uh, this is uh, targeted for beginners to learn the concept and logic uh, behind the php programming language so we will be using procedural uh, or core php programming okay so here i have started the php to open uh, to write the code we need to open the php co php tag and in the php tag as well so this is how we open the php and close the php and uh, we can write uh, the php codes between this so here first thing is we need to check check whether the form is submitted or not okay as in other program languages a double backslash will create a comment here and uh, let's check with if and is set we have a is set function please uh, do research on this function is set in php just go to google and type is set in php and then you will know it it will check whether uh, something is set or not so is set if is set dollar underscore post we will be checking uh, we are using dollar underscore post because we are passing the value using post method dollar underscore post and we also give the specific name so let's give it uh, we can use we can use any name like either list name or list description or submit for now i'll use submit s u b m i t so this will check if uh, submit is set and this uh, all of this name will be set only if uh, button uh, save button is clicked and form is submitted so this will check that whether the submit button or uh, form is submitted or not if submitted then let's uh, display some message so echo echo uh, form submitted so in php to display or to print something we use echo like printf in uh, c program language we use echo to display or print data in php so let's save it and let's go to our browser let's refresh the browser uh, let's type something or we do not need to type anything just click on save button so when we click on this button form submitted it displayed but if we refresh the page and we do not do anything then there is no nothing because we have not submitted the form yet but when we submit the form we can display 
the message so this is it and we can also check else else we can display form not submitted so just for checking purpose i am just uh doing this to show or uh, to make you understand the logic so let's refresh the browser so form is not submitted we don't need to display this but i am showing that uh, uh this is how we check whether the form is submitted or not so when i click on save button this changes into submitted if i refresh it it will be back to form not submitted and we don't need to see this so i'll delete it and we also do not need to display the message instead uh, we will be processing the data from this form and inserting the data into our database so let's work on that so first of all uh, we will need to get the data from this form input tags which is list name data and list description data for that we will create a variable so here i will write a comment uh get the values from form and save it in variables and let's create a variable so dollar and we'll give the variable name list underscore name is equals to dollar underscore post list underscore name that's it in php uh, we create a variable with dollar sign so to create a variable in php we need to add dollar sign before and then the name of the variable and in php we do not need to give the data type it auto automatically uh, determines the data type based on the value provided okay so and we are getting the value using post method here as we created the form and the value we are getting is list underscore name so this and this must be same so do not misspell it otherwise we won't be getting the value from our form so most of the student make uh, error in this section as well so let's check whether the value are obtained or not for that i will use echo echo prints the value so echo list name and let's go to browser let's refresh the browser and i'll type the list name so test list and let's save it and here i can see test list so we are getting the value successfully so let's remove the echo and let's get the value from list description so i'll create a variable dollar list underscore descripts d s c r p t i n description is equals to dollar underscore post and it will be list underscore d e s c r i p t i o n description and semicolon so this and this must be same otherwise we won't be getting any values so let's check it as well so echo and let's save it uh, and let's go to browser refresh the browser and let's test the value so test cri ptn test description and let's click on save so we are getting test description so we have successfully obtained the value from test description as well so let's remove the echo we don't need that and let's refresh this as well so that's it now we have done the one thing that is obtaining the data from our form but now we need to connect our database so connect database and to connect the database we will write the code i will just bring it up and here let's connect the database so i will uh, i will bring it more up so here we will connect the database and let's create a variable so dollar con is equals to my sqli underscore connect and here we need to give the local host l o c a l h o s t host name and then 
we need to give database a username so username will be root for now and password will be empty since uh, we are using jamp local server and the local server has a root username username for local server is root and password is empty but if you are uh, uh, uploading this is an uh, this on a live server then you will have different username for database and different username for a different password for your database so for now we have username root and password is empty that's it and then we will add or die if the database is connected successfully then this will be okay but if the database is not connected successfully then we do not want to process any further so this die will end all this process here and we also just want to display the message so we will write another code mysqli underscore error and parenthesis so this will display the respective error that occurred on connecting database so here we are using mysqli instead of mysql because this is improved version of mysql and this is supported on latest version of mysql or my mariadb database and php but mysql is not supported uh, any longer so we are using mysqli okay so let's save it and uh, we can also check uh, whether the database is connected or successfully or not so let's check it check whether the database connected or not so here we can check if dollar con is equals to is equals to true so this connection will hold either true or for false value so the connection is equals to true means database connected successfully it means echo database connected else we don't need else because it won't be processed further if the database is not connected then it will end uh, or break the processing here it won't come here so it will only run if the database is connected successfully so let's save it by pressing ctrl and s and let's go to our browser let's refresh it and uh, let's click on save button so database connected so we have successfully connected the database but we do not need uh, this message so i will just uh, hide it or comment out it so as in other programming language this asterisk uh, this backslash and asterisk and asterisk backslash will comment out all of this this is a multi-line commenting uh, whether this is a single line comment okay after connecting the database we need to select our database as well select database so to select the database let's create another variable so dollar db underscore select db select is equals to my sqli underscore select my sqli underscore select underscore db so this is the code so my sqli underscore select underscore db and here we need to pass our database connection we made earlier so this database connection will be passed and then we need to pass our database name which is task underscore manager so let's go to our php my admin and let's check the database name this is our task manager is our database name so this is our database name so we can also check whether database check whether database is connected or not so let's uh, check it if dollar dollar db underscore select is equals to is equals to true and then equal 
database selected let's save it and let's refresh the page and let's click on save button and here we have database selected so we have successfully connected and selected the database so let's comment out it as well we don't need it i was just checking whether our code is working correctly or not so this is how we connect the database and select the database so if you have any confusion till now then comment below i will try to reply as soon as possible we have done very well but uh, this line of code these uh, this one and two line of code has some flaw some error or uh, not error some flaw or uh, demerit or disadvantage because we are giving the credentials like username password database name uh, manually and uh, this database connection and database selection will be required on a lot of other pages like on managing list or on displaying the data or managing or inserting updating and deleting task as well uh, and sometime if i need to change the username or password or database name at some point then i will need to change all of these on all of the pages this is a simple uh, application so it might have around 9 or 10 pages so i will have to change if i change uh, if i make one change here then i will have to make changes on all of the pages but what if you have a hundred pages uh, then you will have to make changes on all of those hundred pages is that feasible is that possible no obviously not so to solve that problem we will make uh, a separate file to store all of these values so let's create that file so let's go to our project and inside our project main project folder let's create another folder so i'll create a folder inside our task manager project and i will call it as config c o n f i g config so it will be a folder and inside that folder i will create a file and right click and create a file and its file name will be constants.php so type the name same c o n s T A N T S constants dot php. So I'll click on OK, and it will be inside our config folder. So we have our main project folder, which is task manager, and inside that project we have config folder, and inside the config folder we have constants dot php, and inside that constant dot php we will create uh, constants, or uh, we will save all the credential in that file. So let's open that file and this do not need any styling so we will not write html code we will only write php code so php and here we will create constant so create constants to save database credentials we will be creating constant instead of variable because uh, the database name, password, database username, and local host uh, will remain same for all our pages in our application. Their value won't be changed. So we will be creating constant instead of variables. If you don't know the difference between variable and constant, then please, please, please go to the Google and research on those terms, variable and constant in programming those are the basic terms so we'll be creating constants here so let's create a constant and to create a constant in php we need to start with define tag and here we need to start with single quote and here we'll give the constant name and constant name will always be on capital letter so let's give it localhost l-o-c-a-l so st and then comma and after that we will pass the value so localhost is localhost and value is always on a small letter whereas a local whereas the constant name is on capital letter constant is always on capital letter and the variable is always on a small letter so remind that and after localhost we need 
username db username so define db underscore user name and for now the username is root and similarly we need to create another define db underscore password and the password is empty and similarly we need to give define db underscore name and our db name is task underscore manager so that's it we have created uh, four different constants one is localhost one is db username one is db password and on the last one is db underscore name so whenever we need to make any changes on any of these things we will make changes on here and it will be changed on all of our pages so we need to use this page on all of our pages so to use this page we need to include this page inside our other pages so to include those pages let's go to the page where you want to include this constants.php file so i'll go to add this uh, list.php here and at the top we will add that file so i will start php and php and between this i will write a code which is include and here we will give the path which is config the file is inside config folder and inside that folder we have constants dot php that's it so config folder and constant.php is file so now all of these are available for this file as well because we have included in this file with using include keyword and there are four different ways you can include the file in another page uh, one is include and another one is include once and the difference between is include and include once is that you can include the pages uh, multiple times or you can use include multiple times but if you use include once then the file will be file can be included uh, one time only and similarly we also have another one which is require require and include are similar but uh, if you have error on constant page and you use include it will show the error but it will also uh, process other thing but if you use require instead of include and you, you have a error on constant.php then it won't it will show error here as well and it won't process other things below that uh, so that's the difference between include and require uh, and as we have include once for include we also have require once for require and that also has the same uh, property which is require can be done multiple times but require once can only be done once so please uh, go to google and see the differences between include require and include once and require once so i hope you understand it and uh, we have included uh, those constant in our add list.php file now we need to use that now instead of giving directly the name of username or password or database name we will use uh, our constant here so local so i will give the constant name here and this is a uh, username so this is db underscore user name and this is password so it will be db underscore password db password and similarly this is db name so it will be db underscore name that's it this is how we use constant now uh, now even if we make any changes on here we do not have to come here and make changes so this solves the problem and another constant we need to uh, make is for our url or for our website url so let's create that as well and here i'll create another constant it will be site url 
and its value will be the home page of our URL. So home page will be so let's go to let's uh, so home page will be I will do this and home page is the link with our project name which is localhost slash task manager so this is our home page so i'll copy the link from here copy and we'll paste it here so paste it here control n s control save so site url localhost so this will be our home page and we'll be using site url now let's go to our add list and here we have our home page and link we have given index.php and uh, we have just given we have not given the full link and the best practice is to give the full link so here instead of just giving uh, the manage list.php we also need to give all other things like this link this and then the file name so here we will display the our display our url home page url so echo url and this will give the full link so this will give the link up to here site url will give the link up to here and then we are adding manage that list.php so this will be site url and when we add manage dash list.php it will go to our manage list so it will go to our manage list page similarly for home page we will not use this we will just eat, use php and then echo site url okay so let's save it and let's go to our add list page and let's test it on our home so i'll click on home page and it will directly take us to home page let's make all of these changes on our previous pages which is manage list page and index page so let's go to manage list page and first thing we need to do is include our constant.php file so php open php close and then here we will include includeconfig include config config folder and inside that config folder we have constants dot constants dot php that's it and semicolon and here instead of index.php only here we will display our full url which is site url constant site url so echo site url that's it and similarly for at least page here we will give the full url so this will be our error proof method to give the url so echo site url that's it let's save it and let's go to our home page so i'll go to home page and here also we will include our constant.php php and includeconfig the include config slash constants.php and let's go to our home page where is home page here we'll display our constant site url open php close php and echo yes site url site url that's it and here we will add our url PHP echo site URL that's it let's save it and let's go to our home page and let's check our uh, menu I'll click on home it's redirecting to home page let's go to manage list I'll click on manage list it is successfully going here if I click on add list it is going to our add list page so this is our add list page now we have successfully uh, created our constants uh, and use it on our previous pages let's close it and let's continue our work on inserting data into our database so here we have connected database and selected database now we need to 
write the query to insert the data into database so dollar sql is equals to so here we will write the sql query which is insert into tbl underscore list and we will set and here i will go to the next line so i'll press enter and here we will pass the column name and value set uh, the first column name is list underscore name is equals to and comma and here we'll pass variable which is list name so we'll pass this so dollar list underscore name and we'll add the comma at the end and then list underscore description is equals to dollar list underscore d e s c r i p t i o n description and that's it we don't need to pass list id because it is auto increment so it is it will be generated automatically and inserted into a database and at the end of the last column we don't need to add comma so most of the student uh, make mistake here they add a comma at the end of the column so you will have to add the comma on previous columns but at the end you don't need to add a comma so here we have a query which is insert into this is table name which is tbl underscore list for us and set uh, list underscore name this is a column name in our database and is equal to list underscore name this is a variable with a value from our form and this is column name this is our variable with value so this is our query so let's display the query i will add echo this is just for testing purpose so let's save it let's go to our browser let's refresh the page and i will give here a test list and this is test desc short form for description desc let's click on save so here we have a query insert into tbl list set list underscore name is equals to test underscore list and list underscore description is equals to test description so we have getting the value and the sql query is also okay so we are ready to insert the data into database so let's remove the echo and i'll comment it here i will write a comment here so sql query to insert data into database and let's execute the query and insert the data into database so here i'll write a comment execute query and insert into database so i will create a variable dollar race short form for result and is equal to my sqli underscore q u e r y query and here we need to pass database connection so dollar connection so we created earlier here we have created database connection and dollar connection and then we need to pass sql query which is dollar sql so this is our sql query so we will pass dollar sql that's it and we also need to check whether the query executed successfully or not so here we'll check check whether the query executed successfully or not to check we'll use if condition if dollar this is equals to is equals to true uh, this always holds a uh, true or false value so if the query is executed successfully and data is inserted successfully then it will be true and here i'll write a comment so data inserted successfully else fail to insert data so here we will display the message which is echo and then data inserted and semicolon and then here also we will display the message echo fail to insert data 
that's it and semicolon semicolon data entry we have a message so let's save it and let's check it out so i'll refresh the page and here i will give the data test list and test description and let's click on save button so data inserted we have successfully inserted the data so let's go to our database and uh, let's click on our tbl list so i'll click on tbl list so here we have our data list id 1 automatically generated and inserted and list name is test list and description is test description so we have successfully added the functionality to add the list in our database but after inserting the data successfully we do not want to stay on this page instead we want to go to our manage list page uh, we want to go to this page and also display the message so let's uh, redirect the page so i'll comment it for now because we are we will be not displaying the message on this page we will be displaying the message on manage list page so here we need to redirect first so redirect to manage list page we will only redirect if the data is inserted successfully but if the data is inserted false, then we will be redirecting to the same add list page. So here we will redirect to same page and the code to redirect is header and then code location and colon and here we will give the URL. So we need to give site URL first. This is the URL to our home page, but we are not going to our home page. We are going to our manage-list.php page. So here what we have done is this is a, a string value and this is also a string value, but this is a constant. So we are concatenating constant with our string value using dot. So in PHP full stop or dot concatenates uh, a string with a string a string with constant or variables so please uh, search if you do not understand please search for concatenation in php so we are just uh, connecting uh, constant or variable with a string so that uh, that's it and we also need to redirect to our add this page so here header and then location this should be site url this will be add dash list.php so if failed we will be remaining on the same page so let's check it again i will uh, refresh the page let's go to add list and here test2 and test desc2 let's click on save and we are successfully have redirected to our manage list page that means we have successfully inserted the data and we are redirected to manage list page so let's go to the database and let's refresh the database and we have the data and we have redirected successfully but we do not have a message here so to display the message we will be using session so session is similar to variable but uh, its value its variables value will be available across the web pages and it will remain on browser as long as the browser is open but uh, when the browser is closed the value of the session will be lost so if you want to know more about the session please uh, research on your own this is uh, the easiest way i could uh, make you understand so and i hope you understand as well and to use the session we need to start the session at first so we usually add the code session underscore start at the beginning of the page like ss and session underscore start so this is how we start the session but if i write the session start like this then i will have to write the code on each of the pages but i don't want to do that instead i will be using constants.php page so i'll go to constant.php page and if i open the session or start the session here then it will be the uh, then session will be started automatically on 
each of the pages which has constant.php so this is a cheat uh, this is a trick guys so here i'll write a comment start session so this is the beauty of making a different uh, config file or config folder or config section uh, to manage all of this so this this thing will help a lot in our making uh, this thing will help a lot in making large applications so this is one of the best practices so i will open the session here or i will start the session here and it will be started on all of the pages which has constant.php file so let's close it and we have inst started the session now we need to use the session first thing we need to do is uh, create a session variable to display message so we need to create a session variable to create a session variable we need to use dollar underscore session and the variable name so session variable name will be like add this is add and is equals to and here we'll give value which is uh, list added successfully and semicolon so that's it but this needs to be set before redirecting so we will create the session first and then only we redirect the url uh, but if we add session after the url then it will not be set so similarly we will also create session for our add fail so here create session to save message so dollar underscore session this will also be add underscore let's say add fail is equals to fail to add list that's it and semicolon and this message add fail will be displayed on add list page which is this one and uh, after the menu and after the page name before the form we will display the message here so let's create a, a paragraph tag here and inside this paragraph we will display the message so i will create php here to display the code we need to use php code so i have created a paragraph tag inside the paragraph i have created php and here first we will check check whether the session is created or not so if we will use is set dollar underscore session and we need to give session name as well which is add underscore fail if this session is available then we will display the message so echo dollar underscore session and name of the session here underscore fail and we also let's say display session message and if we leave it like this then it will be displaying messages forever it won't disappear after displaying the message once so to remove the message after showing once we need to unset it so remove the message after this playing once so here we can see onset dollar underscore session and we will remove it add fail similarly we also need to display the message on our manage list because after the successfully adding the list we are redirecting to, to manage list so we'll go to manage list and display the message here so here before the add list or table to display all the list we will display the message here so i will create a paragraph tag here and inside this paragraph we'll start php 
and here we will uh, check the session check if the session is set if i s s it is set dollar underscore session and session name is add when success the session name is add here uh, when success the session name is add and if success is add we will display the message display the message so equal dollar underscore session add so this will display the message and uh, here I have set the onset so I will make you I will try to make you understand what this does so I will not add onset here and let's go to browser let's refresh the page let's go to add list and list uh, add another list test 3 and test c3 and let's click on save and here we have a message list added successfully but if I refresh the page again it won't disappear but we don't want to see this message forever so we need to remove this message so to remove that message we will be using onset so remove the message after displaying one time so onset dollar underscore session add so this will remove this add message so let's save it and let's refresh the page so now if i refresh it will disappear so it disappeared let's go to add list again and let's the something let's add something let's add something and let's click on save button so message is shown one time and if i refresh again this is gone so this is how uh, we uh, insert the data into database using PHP and re redirect it to another page and display the message. So this is it guys. We have successfully added the functionality to add the list in the database. We have also learned how to redirect the page uh, using PHP and we have also learned to use session and we have displayed the message using session in different pages. So that's it. Now we have the data so let's check how many data we have so we have four data right now now we can display those data in our manage list page now we will work on displaying those data inserted in database into our manage list page so let's work on that so let's open our editor code editor and and wait 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 before working on that we can we also need to work on another thing because uh we have this input form and if i do not put anything and just click on save button what will happen we have list added successfully listed added successfully but we do not want that uh, we need to at least uh, insert data into our list name so let's use the html validation so let's go to add list and in our form let's go to our form here in list name let's add another property called required rqui required is equals to required and let's save it and let's refresh the page and let's go to add list now if i try to save it without adding any value then it will display a message called please fill out this form so this is a html validation this is how we validate or make compulsory to insert data in any field but we do not need uh, that data in this field so we won't add that one in here but we will be adding on this name so we have added on this name uh, when i type something and save it it will work but without any value it won't work so now let's work on displaying the data from database into our manage list page so i'll go to my code editor and let's close this add list we have done for add list now now in manage list page here we will need to display data in this section this is the header we do not need to change any heading section we need to display this data these are static data we will make it dynamic data and display data from database so i will 
bracket here and here we will start a php code so php start php end and then here we will connect the database first so connect the database so dollar zero and connection is equals to uh, my sqli underscore connect we need to pass localhost since we have already uh, included the constant.php here we can use all of those constant if we do not include this file then we cannot use those constant okay you need to remember remember that as well and after localhost we need to add db underscore user name constant and then we need to use db underscore password constant that's it and then or die my sqli underscore a r r o r error and parenthesis that's it i will not check this time because we have already checked uh, previous time and i am uh, confident enough to not check but if you want to check then you can check using if else condition okay and then we will select database so dollar db underscore select is equals to my sqli underscore select underscore db and here we will need to give database connection that we created earlier and then we need to pass db name here and or die my sqli underscore error and parenthesis open close that's it and then we need to write sql query sql query q u to display all data from database so dollar sql is equals to we will use select query select all from select all from tbl underscore list so that's it this is the sql query and then we need to execute the query so to execute the query we will create a variable dollar list which is short form for result is equals to mysql underscore query and here we will pass database connection first and then after connecting we need to pass dollar sql dollar sql and here we will check whether the execute whether the query executed successfully or not check whether the query executed or not so if dollar race is equal to is equal to true and then we will display we will work further or work on displaying data so this will make sure that data is or uh, query is executed successfully let's check here echo and then executed so let's save it and this will make sure that the query is executed successfully so let's save it and let's go to our browser and refresh our manage list page and here i can see the message which is executed so if you cannot see this message then you have some error please fix some issues uh, we have not written much code so just try to uh, look at it and try to fix it okay now we don't need to execute it but instead uh, we need to count the number of rows or the number of data we have in database if i go to our database we have five rows of data one two three four five so if uh, we can count those rows and get the number of rows then we can display the message if there are no values if there are no values then we can display the message like there are no values in our database uh, if we have value then we can display all the data so let's count the rows of data in database for that let's create a variable called 
count underscore rows is equals to mysqli underscore num underscore rows so this is the function which count the number of rows in database and here we need to pass a result res res and so we have passed the result here let's see how many data we have let's save it i will go to database first and refresh it and let's see we have uh, six number of rows in our database so let's refresh it and i can see six so it successfully counts the number of rows so let's remove the echo and here we will add a condition so to check whether there are data in database or not check whether there is data in database or not so if dollar count rows is greater than zero this means there's data in database and we can't display in table but if there is less than zero that means there is no data so here we need to pass else 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 there is no data else no data in database and here we need to display the message so to display the message we will be using our uh, table row and column so i will break the php here and start the php again so what i have done is i have end the php here and started the php here again so the start of the php this php start will end here and this php will end here and between this line we can write html code for that purpose i have end the php here and started the php here so i will write the row here table row and we have how many rows uh, this is a row and we have one two three column but we won't need three column we will only need one column and here i will say uh, no list added yet so this will be the message and here i will use cold span so hope you understand the cold span cold span uh, is used to merge the columns so here we have three columns so i'll merge three columns and make it as one column so this is it and here in if condition here we will have to display all the data in our table okay so here now we need to get all the data from database and for that we will use a uh, while loop so let's say while and we need to create another variable as well dollar row is equal to my sqli underscore fetch underscore sok and here we will pass dollar race dollar sorry dollar race and here let's open and close our query braces so we have created a while loop because there are uh, there will many rows of data in database so we need to use loop to get all the data from database and here we are using while loop and this while loop will continue as long as uh, there is data in database so the number of times uh, the loop will continue will be defined by this and dollar row is an array uh, the value from database will be obtained from this function we are passing the result here uh, this result this result holds the value from database and this result will be used to get all the data from database using this function which is mysqli underscore fetch underscore esoc please do research on this function as well and this data will be stored as a array in this row so this will act as a array so this has all the value from database now we need to get those value as an individual value for that we will need to create another variable inside while loop so dollar list underscore id is equals to dollar row which is array and here we will give the database column name which is 
list underscore id and similarly we will also pass dollar list list name is equals to dollar row this is an array and here we need to pass column name which is list underscore name and we won't be displaying description so we don't need description because in manage underscore list we are not displaying description we are only dis displaying list name so that's it now i will write a comment here getting the data from database and here after this i will break the php code and start the php code here again php and between this i will write the html code to write the html code only i have broken php and started the php so this is a little bit uh, forward uh, to beginner and less than intermediate or advanced programming so uh, if you uh, if you have any confusion on understanding uh, these things and if you want to me to make tutorial on basic things of php like writing a php code inside html or writing html code inside php what is variable what is constant what is loop what are if else conditions uh, like those basic stuffs then please comment down below i will make tutorial on that as well but if you are comfortable and uh, can understand these things then i will make other advanced tutorial as well but for now let's continue our tutorial and here i will write html code which will be this one so i will just copy this and paste it here and uh, let's indent it let's make it better so just select up to here and press tab 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 and tab until you are satisfied and it will be on right place and here we can delete this now so we will delete this let's save it by pressing ctrl and s and here instead of to do we will display our list name so php echo dollar list name so that's it let's uh, save it and let's refresh the manage list page and here we have test list, test, test list and in serial number we are getting one 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 so let's try to uh, display our list id php echo dollar list id so if we display the list id then we can get the symbol number we have uh fully stuff after the psp code and we are displaying the list id and this is perfect but this won't work perfectly because uh, when i delete any data so let's go to our database for now and i will delete this blank i will click on delete button and delete data is deleted so if i refresh this then this will break the chain one two three four and there is no five instead there is six so we can't use list id instead which will we will create a variable so after count rows let's create a serial number variable so create a serial number variable variable so i will call it dollar sn is equals to dollar sn is equals to one i will give its value as one and i will display this instead of list id dollar sn so let's save it and let's refresh the page uh, refresh the page so it is displaying one on one on one so that's not working so you might say but that's not working bj so we can fix it by adding plus plus so this will add plus one value every time it loops it will add one as a increment so uh, now this works perfectly if you do not understand this plus plus you can always look for while loop or for loop in google and you will understand so this sn plus plus will always increment the value by one on every loop so this is it so we have successfully displayed the data on our manage list page as well so this is it we will use list id to update and read our list
so we'll work on that next okay so we have successfully added the functionality to add the list in our database also display the list in our manage list page now we will work uh, we will work on updating and deleting list but if you have confusion or if you have any error till now then please comment below i will try to reply as soon as possible but if you are enjoying this tutorial and want to learn more then please 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 click on that subscribe button and click on that bell icon so that you won't miss uh, further advanced tutorial on web application development with php and mysql will be learning more advanced things like oop and we'll be doing uh, more awesome projects uh, in coming days so please 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 subscribe and also don't forget to share with your friends and tell them that this is the best channel to learn software development or web application development please 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 subscribe and share with your friends and tell them to subscribe as well okay let's continue our tutorial on updating and deleting data for our list page okay